Over the past few months, we've seen the growing use of algorithms able to manipulate natural language. An example of a tool powered by such an algorithm is ChatGPT, a conversational agent capable of doing a broad range of text-related tasks like writing an essay or building a scenario. While these tools can be seen as a revolution, the principle of the method powering them isn't new. For example, a similar method is used in our phones for predicting the next word that we could write. This type of algorithm is called a language model. This is a program capable of doing one particular thing. Given a context of words, predict the word that is the most likely to appear after this context. We call this the next word prediction task. We may ask ourselves how the mastering of such a simple task can give rise to powerful algorithms like ChatGPT. Let's say we give the model the beginning of this sentence and ask it to predict the rest of it. Here, in order to do that, one has to pay attention to the subject of the sentence, the word bug, but also to the word software, which allows one to understand the meaning of the word bug in this sentence. In this case, a computer software bug. And concretely, how can we get a model to perform this next word prediction task? This is called training. We extract text from the internet and the model will adjust its parameters in order to perform as best as possible on the next word prediction task on this data. When doing this training with little data on a middle-sized model, size measured by the number of parameters of the model, we get algorithms capable of mastering the language syntax, grammar and vocabulary, but not the semantics. They are not capable of doing language manipulation tasks. However, we observed that training larger models using more data, equivalent to 50 times the volume of English Wikipedia, gives these models new capacities like translation or basic reasoning. These large models are even capable of learning to do a task they have never seen, just by a simple description of the task or from a few examples showing how to do this task. This is done using prompting, which is a technique used to condition the model to achieve a particular task. A video dedicated to prompting is also available. In a few years, language models went from having a few millions parameters to hundreds of billions. This is why they are now called large language models. And the end result is impressive. Here we see that the model is able to store common knowledge and masters enough aspects of the language to be able to restore it in a useful way. However, one can't really say that these models understand language. They base their predictions on statistical regularities in the language, which enables them to use this language to achieve various textual tasks. ChatGPT's answers are sometimes so human-like that we might wonder if the model has developed some kind of personality. Well, actually, no. And to understand that we have to go back to the task the model follows. Predict the word and human is the most likely to write after a context of words. Here the model tells us that its favorite color is blue. This doesn't reflect any preference or any taste expressed by the model. This answer, along with the probabilities of the other colors, is only reflecting the distribution of preferred colors among humans, distribution expressed in the data on which the model was trained on. Thus, associating a personality to the model's answers makes no sense, since the model produces its responses from what different people said in different contexts. Another sore point about these large language models is the knowledge they encode. As we said, they have been trained on data extracted from the internet, data whose truthfulness cannot be verified. Furthermore, the information learned by these algorithms can't be traced back to its source. In other words, given a piece of knowledge expressed by the model, we can't know where this knowledge comes from. Along with these data-related issues, it has been shown that language models can hallucinate and make up facts. Here, the model hallucinates the fact that cows lay eggs and even invent informations like the mass of these eggs. These issues can make the practical usage of language models, in some cases, risky. A video dedicated to the limitations and weaknesses of language models is also available. We can easily imagine how this can cause problems when people use it to ask questions in areas such as health, politics, and more generally on societal issues. It seems that large language models are going to power more and more tools in the near future, in a broad range of fields. We can point out usages in domains like education, with automatic correction or in writing of text or code which allows humans to be discharged from technical tasks, allowing them to focus on conceptual tasks. 
As of today, the majority of the most powerful large language models are owned by large companies, which don't communicate very much about the data used from training. However, open initiatives like Bloom, a competing model of ChatGPT, are being developed in order to guarantee the diffusion of this technology. It is therefore important to understand these language models in order to know their limitations, which must be considered if we want to have an informed and reasoned use of these algorithms.